What do you, fuck you, Sammy, just end this. Fuck you and fuck Locke. You're both idiots. You were, you always disgusted me. And I showed my contempt for you in not blazing, desk pounding ways. But you, you just made me sick. You always did. I knew you were a big fake liar. And now, and Locke was always a big fucking, uh, you know, uh, just wishy-washy piece of shit. So don't tell me. Just end this. I could go on until the... On and on and on. For, I don't want to go on about anything in this community anymore. But Ray, God damn it. I do want to explain that to you as in like, I would rather like you. I, I enjoyed you in much of the times. But but you did some terrible things. Uh, you know, like inflicting. You know, going to the bartender. Like, you can't just sit there and talk with me. You have to go to the bartender and say I'm a lonely old pathetic man. And, um, and bring the bartender who's busy out to meet me. And I'm like... And I'm, when I start realizing, like, oh, my God, what he's been told about me. So embarrassing. And you did it twice with a, a couple. It was, and same thing at Pulse. You did everything to just, you can't stop yourself. And I realize it. Like, you've got a sickness on being useless when you control all the info. You know what I mean? Any single given pred, I can't go, uh, did you say you want a fuckity doodly diddly do? Because uh, I don't know whether they said that or not. So I can't say it. You bastard. You controlling bastard. All right from the beginning. Like, I'm taking the master bedroom. You. Uh, do you know how much money that fucking house cost? And you all want to make fun of Sam and everything. But he paid for it. And you go, I'm taking the master bedroom. And fucking Sam ended up sleeping in one of the rooms with bunk beds. With nobody else in it. But, but one of the lesser rooms. And he gave me and Ed a better, you know, rooms of our own. And then fucking Ray down on the only one on the bottom floor. Which, by the way, I could have really used because everyone's like, you know, somebody comes out in the night going like, what, are you okay? Because they hear me huffing and puffing my way up the stairs. But Ray has to have that fucking uh, prime room. God damn you, you selfish, awful man. And I got in your car. You were, you, you, it was like I threw a sack of potatoes in the back. And you didn't even look at her. And you're like, get Blonde Java on the phone and put her on speaker. And it's like, what the fuck, man? It's, it's insane. I knew you were sick, sick. Well, I knew it before that. But that was just like, that's so sick. You've never, you know, you've seen us online. But you never, here we are in person. I'm right next to you. Blonde, uh, and uh, Christy's right behind me. Say hello. How's the flight? No. You you think Blonde Java slighted you somewhere in the annals of time? Uh, and you want me to immediately get her on a speakerphone, let Christy rot, rot back there, and let me rot over here uh, so you could talk to her. Because I could arrange it. God damn you, Ray. Don't you realize how sick that is? And that's the way it began.